Uh, good afternoon all. I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes because lots of people are joining at the moment. So I'm just going to give uh, everybody a chance to get in and uh, then we'll make a start. Okay, I think we've got uh, everybody we're probably going to um, this afternoon um, and welcome. Uh, I'm Steve Moyer, the head teacher. Hopefully uh, you will know who I am uh, and Tom Hill, uh, director of Post 16 is going to be presenting as well. Um, I hope uh, the return back into school has been, been a good one for year 13 um, and, and reassuring and you know we really share your frustration and disappointment that you know we're in this position again with, with exams obviously you know it's of nobody's doing um but but i know it's been challenging for all of us um but what what i think um i do feel uh, reassured and confident about is is the process that we're going to share with you um i know you've probably been waiting a bit chomping at the bit to find out exactly um, what approach we're going to take and the process that we're going to put put in there. Um, but we obviously want to take our time to uh, look at all of the guide guidance that's available and to consider how best to do this. Um, I'm going to talk about principles in a moment, um, but 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 you know I'm going to reiterate the same things that what we are committed to being is is being as fair and transparent and consistent as possible in how we go about. Um, the teacher assessed gradings um, and that we are not disadvantaging our students in any way because it is definitely not their fault that we've uh, gone through this pandemic and uh, lockdown etc so so it's you know we, we are striving to ensure that our students aren't disadvantaged at all and that they're given every opportunity to shine really and to show what they can do that we're rewarding what they're showing what what their abilities are um, and it's certainly not about uh, penalising what isn't there, what hasn't been done at all. So that's very much sort of where we're coming from. Um, this is recorded. Um, we have got, um, I'm sure you've seen a Q&A function at the bottom. Um, so if you do have any questions, then you can log them and we will try and pick them up and answer them as we go. I would probably suggest that obviously we will likely answer a lot of those um, issues as we go. Um, so it might be worthwhile um, waiting until you get uh, until we get towards the end of it. Yeah, might might be sensible. Um, I would say you know we we've got several advantages um, this year. Having said you know the challenges and disappointments etc. Um, in that we went through a similar process last year. Not the same. There, there are differences. Um, but, but, you know, a lot of the processes and structures we have in place, the experience that our subject leaders and, and um, year 11, year 13 teachers had last year, that, that will stand us in good stead about, you know, using the evidence and, and making the, the judgments that we do. Um, also, we're part of a trust, and, th and that gives us several advantages because we're going to be going through um, a detailed moderation and quality assurance process, obviously, as you'd expect. We're going to do that within subject areas um, we're going to do that as a school but also it allows us you know to do that we deliver our post 16 across the trust so we're going to quality assure across the trust and moderate across the trust wherever possible and finally obviously i'm sure you know that the uh, exam boards are the ones who actually award the qualification uh, rather than the school so they will be doing some random sampling uh, and moderation of our process and of the evidence that we use within that as well so I'm telling you all that really to hopefully reassure you 
um, with what I've said already. Uh, I'm going to start um, sharing um, a PowerPoint. Uh, and uh, take you through that. Uh, and then I'm going to pass over to Mr. Hill in just one minute. Sorry, I'm just trying to get it to show. Let me have another go at that. You'd think I've never done uh, an online lesson before, wouldn't you? No, nope, still not working. Here we go. Hooray. Right. Um, so I think it's really important to reiterate that, that, that those are the principles that we're basing all of this on. Um, so um, the fairness and equalities is um, what this is about. It's about giving opportunities now for the students to really show what they're capable of uh, and to build up that evidence and to ratify the teacher assess grades, really. Um, the clear and transparency, this is the start of that, is really sharing that with you. Uh, Gary Lobbett, the um, executive head teacher for secondary, um, is going to um, send out a letter today, clarifying the process. We're going to be communicating a lot. Um, just going through uh, the detail of the process and Mr Hill's going to take you through that in a second. We're really aware this has been a stressful, challenging time for, for um, members of staff and students. So, you, you know, we know um, and we want the support as much as possible. So please do communicate with us with, with whatever you need support and help with. Um, we, if, if we're in the middle of units and in some courses, then we, we'll try and finish them um, this term. Uh, because I think that's the, the right and proper thing to do. Um, we do not have to finish all of the content uh, on any course, and um, that's not an expectation. So, um, and, and this is the philosophy really that I'm trying to, to get over to you. Um, so teachers are making that holistic judgment. It's based on a range of evidence from when um, the students began the course in year 12. Um, and um, it, it's about what, what has been already delivered. Obviously, we're not, if you haven't finished the course, there'll be no assessment of any content that hasn't been delivered or followed. Um, and that evidence can be things that were done in the classroom in year 12 and in year 13 when they're in school. Any of the remote learning is also absolutely valid. And obviously, we did online um, mock exams. So, so clearly, that's going to be part of the evidence um, that, that we'll be using. And that key point that students shouldn't be disadvantaged because the global pandemic is really, really important. So, um, you know, I've mentioned this already. Obviously, 2019, we, we had that normal experience and, and we will certainly use past historical data to benchmark um, our performances um, in, in certain subject areas and to flag where there's underperformance or overperformance as well. Again, to make sure that we're being as consistent as possible. Last year, as I said, we had uh, the predictions in the year 11 and year 13 on the 23rd of March uh, stopped. Um, so we then just had to predict where they would end up um, if they had carried on all the way into um, May and June to do their exams. Whereas this time we're going to have a validation process where we're going to use term five to provide further evidence to validate the grades and the judgments that we think um, students uh, will get to. So that's the kind of broad uh, brush principle that we're starting with. I'm sure you're desperate actually to know the detail of what that will look like. And I'm going to pass over to Mr. Hill to do that. Mr. Hill. Thank you. Sorry, can you do the next slide, please? So um, the process for awarding grades, um, some of you may uh, be aware of this because uh, lots of it has been covered in the press recently, um, but teachers are creating assessment tasks at the moment um, and have already started sharing dates with students about when these assessment tasks will take place. And so the purpose of this is uh, students have obviously create, uh, completed prior assessments and have done mock exams, end of unit tests, pieces of coursework, all of those sorts of things. Um, and some students have done brilliantly in them and that's absolutely fantastic. Um, and that will count as an evidence towards a grade. 
Um, and some students haven't always performed uh, consistently or have had a mock that hasn't gone well, or uh, we want to take into account also those students who um, kind of make that final jump uh, when the final assessments come along. And so the purpose of these assessment tasks in term um, five um, are all about us providing evidence to give students the grades they deserve. And so it's really just an evidence collection tool. Um, and so there will be assessment tasks regularly. Different subjects will do different amounts, and that's absolutely right and proper, depending on their curriculum and how they teach their course. Um, the benefit of these assessment tasks is we will be telling students the topics they cover. So they'll have smaller, what we call modular assessment tasks. And that means we're going to break big assessments into smaller assessment tasks. The reason we're going to do that rather than having kind of a big exam week is because if someone was ill with COVID, for example, or was isolating um, and they missed that uh, exam week or mock period, um, then that would be a real problem. And so what we've gone for instead is a modular approach where students will have small assessments fairly regularly, um, but they will know the topics that are covered in those. And as I said, teachers are starting to tell students about that already. Um, sorry, if you go back one. Um, so staff at the moment, as I said, are thinking about prior evidence. And so that can include all of those uh, pieces of coursework and things like that we've mentioned. And I'll talk about evidence shortly. Um, and over the next couple of weeks, students will find out about their assessment plans. Um, some subjects are going to be focusing on controlled assessments. So I know product design, for example, are spending lots of time thinking about and focusing on their controlled assessment. And that's because the NEA part of that course is a major part in terms of the weightings for the course. Um, history, for example, might be spending time, any courses with NEA might be spending time finishing those um, where possible. Um, and the evidence used to decide grades can vary for each student. There's not a set fit in terms of all students were going to use this, this and this. Different students will have different evidence. And that, again, is all about us trying to get the best and fairest grades for our students. Thank you. So assessments um, will start from the last week of term. I don't think there are many subjects doing them in the last week of term. Um, most of them will be next term, but they could start um, from the last week of term. They're going to be in class. Um, and the focus for subject teachers now is about preparing students for those assessments. So most subjects won't be teaching uh, new content. They might be just finishing the topic they're on. But after that, they won't be teaching any new content. And it will all be about preparing students for those topics. Any students who get exam access arrangements or have any kind of other special situations, um, teachers will provide those students uh, where appropriate with the reasonable adjustments. Um, and it is all about, as Mr. Moyer said, about students having every opportunity to succeed. And so by having these smaller areas to revise, um, revision should be easier because it's chunking it down for people. So um, I've talked about uh, evidence. There's a few different types of evidence that we can use. I've mentioned uh, the NEA, the non-exam assessment. Um, so that's your coursework. If it's not, even if it's not been completely finished, you, we, uh, teachers have been told that they can uh, provide uh, a grade based on um, coursework that hasn't even completely been finished. And that's because of the disruption um, that COVID has brought us all. Um, past paper questions that respect the specification. So students have done lots of these from uh, mock exams in year 12, um, in October, the recent open book assessments. And also I know that subjects set people mock exams and past paper questions to do as homework and during lockdown and things like that. So all of that is a type of evidence. Substantial class or homework. So uh, if you where students have done uh, fairly major pieces of classwork or homework during remote learning, uh, then they will all count. Most subjects do regular end of topic or end of unit tests. They count as evidence. We've talked about mock exams. Um, <clears throat> where subjects uh, do have a more practical element like music, drama, sport, um, records of a student's capability and performance count. Um, and over the Easter period, uh, the exam board are going to be providing um, assessment materials to support um, with uh, the assessments in term five and obviously those count as well where subjects decide to use them. So it is really important that the grades we produce are fair and right for our students um, and so uh, assessed pieces of work are going to be blind marked. What that means is um, 
other teachers might mark students work or students names might be removed from pieces of work before they're marked just to avoid any suggestion of potential bias. Um, we will uh, carry out internal standardization and marking of marking and of the assessments before they um, get given to students. So we'll make sure that the assessments are fair, they ask the right questions, um, and then we will make sure that when they're being marked, that they're being marked correctly by everyone who's marking them. Um, unfortunately, we can't provide students with grades or percentages um, after they've completed an assessment. Um, we have to uh, keep these uh, away from students. It's been made really clear by the exam board that we can't give um, grades to students. Um, and naturally, as a result of that, um, we cannot give students their assessment papers after they have um, completed them. They'll be marked and then they'll be kept safely by teachers so that we've got that evidence um, if we were asked to show it um, by an exam board in terms of their moderation and standardization. Um, and as uh, Mr. Moyer said, we are obviously part of the Olympus Post 16. Um, and so the head of the Olympus Post 16, the secondary assessment lead, the secondary executive head teacher will be reviewing all grades before they get submitted to the exam boards as just as another level of quality assurance. And obviously internally here, um, our leadership team will be reviewing all the grades before they get submitted. So we've put in a number of kind of checks in terms of before the assessments have been uh, given to students, whilst they're being marked, and then the final grades after that to make sure that we have that quality assurance and to make sure great students are getting the correct grades that they deserve. So that is the end of our presentation. Um, if you've got questions at this point, I guess this would be a good time um, to put them into the chat. Um, we have had a couple um, come in um, asking about what we should do if uh, students haven't performed so strongly in past mock exams. Um, and they are going to pull out the stops for their final exams. Um, well, hopefully by giving students the uh, opportunity to do assessments in term five, we're giving students that opportunity to pull out the stops um, for their final exams. Um, another question here, in the time that said fairness, the assessment questions will be shown to students before the test to ensure overall fairness. Are you planning to do this? Um, I think that's uh, something the media have picked up on in terms of the Questions that the exam board produce um, will be uh, shared with teachers and students um, in terms of openness, um, but it wouldn't be appropriate for us to share all the questions from every assessment um, with students because otherwise um, grading them will be very, very difficult because if everyone knew the questions and knew the answers, then we're not going to get the spread of grades and we do need to be a real realistic in terms of the grades we give students need to reflect their performance and if every student knew every question and every answer, that would be really difficult. I think that was also because there was a concern um, that the if they didn't share them all, that they could be leaked out as well and that they get out anyway, or they get to some and not others. So they've decided, the exam boards have decided just, just, just to share them all. Um, There's two questions here in the chat that uh, should be quite straightforward. Um, so the first one is, when will we receive the timetables for the assessments? Um, the timetables for assessments are starting to be given by teachers already. Um, and so if you speak to your subject teachers, they only found out this information on Wednesday, though. Um, and so we're only two days later from that. And I know some subjects have started, but by the end of next week, um, all students should know um, their uh, details of when their assessments are for their subjects. Students aren't going to get a kind of formal exam timetable um, because uh, almost all students only do three subjects. Um, it's just a question of you speaking to your individual teachers to find out when you get your um, when your assessments will be. So there's another question here about how will students know if they've uh, they're doing enough if they're not told the results of assessment and mark work. It's a very good question and when students do normal exams, um, they don't, they obviously hand them in and then and, and that's it. Um, and they will have a rough idea of how they performed. And the whole point of these modular assessments is they're giving students multiple opportunities to show what they're capable of. And so if one hasn't gone so well, 
it's it's not the be or end all in terms of these term five assessments it's just one piece of evidence and so if students are doing multiple assessments and they've got their prior evidence as well not performing in one shouldn't shouldn't concern and worry students because they've got many other opportunities to kind of show what they're capable of i think as well it's it, it's about all your eggs not being one basket either you know the fact that we're going to take evidence across the whole course um, with which you know with terminal exams uh, that wouldn't normally be the case. And I know it's quite hard to see advantages in, in the position that we're put in, but actually that is one area where we can take into consideration a lot more um, evidence than you would normally be allowed to for a grade. It would normally just be about that terminal exam for most courses. There's another question coming about, will the timetable assessment also include which modules are being assessed? Um, yes, so teachers should, uh, when teachers talk to uh, students about the exams and the assessments they're doing, um, they should be really clear about what topics are covered in those assessments. Um, and if students at the end of next week have any questions or worries, please just get them to make contact with me. I'm really happy to um, get any information they need from their teachers. There's another one just coming about um, standardisation and training for teachers. I think one of, one of the things that we've... Uh, massively encouraged within um, all of our subject areas is for our staff to become examiners. So there is at least one examiner in, 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 in every faculty and in most subject areas. Um, so most of our staff have had uh, that formal training um, as an examiner. And we, we run through, and one again advantage of being across the trust is that you know we do mod moderation and training together on a regular basis. So. So you know, again, we feel really confident that our staff are more than capable of, of carrying out standardization, moderation and grading. Um, and a, another good question was about um, what happens if there is another lockdown. I, I, I think um, it's really quite unlikely that we will have another lockdown which closes schools in, in that period. And I base that on the facts that the infection rates are reducing really quickly, thankfully. And also, because of the vaccination of the over 50s, who are the ones who ended up in ICU the most, um, and that was one of the reasons why we went into lockdown, the major reason, that that, that story is really unlikely. What is a much more likely scenario is that some, um, some students might have to self-isolate um, if they've been in contact with somebody who um, is tested positive for COVID or they have COVID. Hopefully, you feel reassured that when we did the year 13 mocks uh, online, and you know, that's our contingency plan, if need be, for those who are self isolating, that we would, you know, get the papers out to those individuals, carry out the same sort of invigilation process, and make sure that you get the opportunity to do that, really. Uh, I missed any, any more, Mr. Hill. Um, so a couple have come in. Will the assessments apply to year 12 students who are due to um, have part of their course assessed this year? Yes, absolutely. Um, there are a few um, uh, year 12 courses, um, particularly vocational courses um, and criminology um, who are due to and core maths are due to have their course assessed this year. That exactly the same process will happen um, and they will get their teacher assessed grades and will have assessments next term. Um, and other questions come in saying when will the assessments end? The assessment, the term, uh, the term and actually this, the school year officially will end for the last day for year 13s will be Thursday, the 27th of May. Um, Friday, the 28th is a uh, inset day. Um, and so that Thursday, the 27th will be the last day. Um, we, depending on restrictions, we would like to invite year 13 students back in term six for some form of leavers assembly um, or and some form of kind of farewell um, indoors or outdoors. But um, we just need to see where we are with the virus, where we are with restrictions before we can confirm anything like that. But we, we do hope to get them in for a farewell. Um, there's a question there that, that I, think, I think we certainly uh, touched on about not being able to share percentages and grades following an assessed piece. And, and that's actually the exam boards who have said we're not allowed to do that. And that's be, because we might bias um, any of those judgments for grades and also the appeals process. And as I've said, um, the exam boards are actually the ones who award grades and qualifications, not the school. We're, we're, we're just part of that recommendation process. So we can't uh, share that, I'm afraid. 
Um, so this question, uh, someone apologizing for being late, but saying, can uh, a grade going to be based on already done assessments as well as forthcoming ones? Yes, they are. So any work students have done up to this point um, can be used as evidence. Um, will June be used for bridging work? Um, it will be for some year 11s going into year 12. I know there are some year 13s who are anxious and uh, well, that they're going to not be taught their whole course and they might be going to study physics uh, at university and they want to haven't covered a certain topic in physics. And I've already had some teachers asking me if they could email resources to students so that they could kind of carry on work outside in term six uh, in their own time. And absolutely they can. And if you have got a son or daughter who would like some kind of bridging to university stuff, I know that teachers would would love to support by signposting them to resources or websites or providing PowerPoints on topics they've not yet covered and all of that sort of stuff. So yes, there will be some form of support available. Um, August the 10th is, is A-level results day. Um, so yes, absolutely. Um, will it be an opportunity price for the assessments? Again, absolutely. That's what um, in, in students of the lessons, it'll be about preparing, revising, uh, and um, practicing for those assessments, exactly that. So those are all the questions that have come in at this point. Um, if you've got a burning question. It, well, it, it's also with saying, Mr Hill, if obviously people are gonna go away and reflect and uh, I'm sure there'll be more questions. This isn't it, please do uh, email or you know, let us know if there's anything else that you want more detail on. And like I say, we're gonna keep um, communicating with you the details of those assessments are going to be coming out to you uh, and students in the next week or so. Um, There's just two last questions. Um, one uh, very uh, kind person uh, just reflecting that this is going to be a lot of extra work for teachers alongside their usual teaching. Um, and yes, um, this is going to be uh, done. So the assessments will happen in lessons um, and the marking will happen outside of this, outside of lessons. Um, so yes, there is a, a a real extra workload on teachers next term and uh, thank you for recognizing that but we will make sure we kind of support staff with that there's there's some really timely inset days coming up which i know sometimes might feel inconvenient and you 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 might wonder uh i mean after training teachers well we've got one on the first first monday back um for term five which obviously we're going to be absolutely focused on this process um and, and we've also got one, I think, on the last day of that term as well, which again uh, gives us an opportunity to do all of those big moderation processes where we, we need to get um, a number of staff together to do. Um, and then the last question that's just come in is around individual reports. So students had a report sent home um, a about a week or so ago um, and so there won't be another report um, after that after that so they've just had one um, which had their information on um, and yeah there won't be any more reports going home at this stage yeah and thank you for more lovely comments we we do i always um, put them up in um, briefing staff briefing uh, which we have twice a week you know all the nice feedback and and it's really good for staff to know uh, that they're appreci appreciating what they're doing so thank you for those uh, comments as well so i think i think that's that's it for now as i say this isn't it please let us know if there are any other questions anything else you want to know we, we work together what that's been a brilliant thing throughout the lockdown um how you know families and and the school and students have all support each other and work together and we'll keep doing that so um thank you have a have a good weekend uh, and we'll be in touch with you soon thank you